Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Nazia Iqbal and here's a look at the stories for the day. कॉस्ट are now passing on the price increases to customers our next report tells why indians will be facing further inflation on fmcg products and consumer durables in tatters due to the prolonged pandemic the global supply chain was recovering when russia struck ukraine with all its might Last week the 145 year old London Metal Exchange was forced to suspend nickel trading and cancel trades after prices doubled overnight to $100,000 a ton amid a market panic triggered by Russia's actions. The exchange described the current events as unprecedented. Russia accounts for 10% of global nickel supply, 6% of the aluminum output and 18% of wheat exports. Aluminium, copper, zinc, lead, crude oil, wheat, natural gas, coal and edible oils are some of the commodities that have been on the boil as traders feared supply disruptions on account of the Russia-Ukraine war. With the price of metals and plastics used in appliances and consumer durables shooting up, several manufacturers had already affected price hikes last year. They are gearing up for another round now. Usha International which sells fans, cooking appliances, sewing machines and water heaters, said the company may have to pass on price increases to the tune of 10 to 15% in April. The main core uh, commodities would be uh, steel and plastic, both are up and, and and also because of the rise in the crude oil prices, freight costs are bound to go up, so which is going to affect everything. I, I think uh, the industry is in for a price increase. the only difference would be that it would not be an immediate price increase because most of the manufacturers would have planned their purchases right up to may considering the summer season so possibly the industry will see a, a slew of price increases happening from june onwards so we i only hope that at that time the dollar stabilizes and we don't see any further hike in the dollar our industry has been under a price pressure now for for more than a year and we've been taking price hikes right through and post diwali again a major price hike happened various companies staggered their prices some did it over a period of 3 months some did it over a period of 2 months on an average the prices went up from about 7 to 10% see the the good thing is that this is the first summer that we're going to have after 2 years the last two summers were badly impacted because of covid obviously the summer season is going to be far better than the last two years so in in that respect we're going to see a good h1 say jan to june FMCG companies too are preparing to pass on higher input costs. Hindustan Unilever hiked prices across its portfolio of products by 3 to 13% in multiple tranches in February with the sharpest increase of 13% seen in the 100 g Lux soap pack. Crude oil derivatives and vegetable oil are key raw materials used in making soaps, cosmetics and detergents. Dabur India CEO Mohit Malhotra recently highlighted continued inflation in hydrocarbon derivatives, paper-based packing material, raw honey and spices. He said Dabur undertook calibrated price increases of about 5% in key products. The sharp price increase in all major commodities is hurting every step of a company's supply chain from manufacturing to packaging to distribution. Let us hear more from Krishna Rao Budda of biscuits and confectionery maker Parley Products. Our our main stakeholder is on uh, biscuits, for which uh, uh, some of our key uh, raw materials are wheat flour, uh, uh, oil, vegetable oil, and uh, and sugar. Fuel is also one of the key inputs uh, to produce in in manufacturing. Last uh, four quarters, I would say, we we started seeing uh, uh, input prices shooting up. 
and they have continued to rise through the entire year of 2021 and we see that continued even in this quarter and with the war we are expecting this to continue for even longer time we've already seen almost a 100% increase in the fuel cost okay as, as far as our manufacturing is concerned the prices of palm oil uh, is also shooting up uh, significantly because of the war now there is a demand for wheat though we have india as a country we have surplus wheat with us so packaging material has been on fire since like like i said last uh, five quarters and it continues to be so, so these are all derivatives of uh, uh, crude the plastic laminates for the past five quarters we have been continuously taking price increases we are already planning for the next uh, set of price increases fortunately i would say uh, consumers seem to have accepted uh, that there is an inflation and uh, it has not really uh, had as much of an impact on the demand Although commodity inflation is not expected to cool down anytime soon, demand is still holding up, led by the post-COVID economic recovery. However, private consumption could turn sluggish again as it faces headwinds from soaring commodity prices. Sab achhi dikh rahi hain yaar. Kaun se kare do? Ye to wahi baat hui. 4000 shares listed hai. Kaun sa lu? वो तो सबसे आसान है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग Meanwhile inflation in Sri Lanka recently soared past 14%. The island nation is going through its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948 and an economic emergency has been clamped. But the government has taken several steps to tame inflation and boost growth. The upcoming Colombo International Financial City or Colombo Port City is one of them. Touted as an economic game changer, its relaxed business environment is expected to attract global firms salia vikramasurya director general of the project tells more about this ambitious project in an interaction with business standards aditi fadnis let's listen in uh, mr salia vikramasurya uh, director general of colombo port city thank you so much for being with us mr vikramasurya will share with us what uh, he believes are the strongest points of the entirely new development which is coming up uh, in uh, sri lanka in the as the port city uh, mr vikramasurya tell us about the port city port city uh, well it will allow us in in the opinion of the commission to leverage a few advantages we already have it has a port that's ranked number 22 in the world for containers so Uh, it, it it's already um, it's already well placed in the logistics sphere of global transport we uh, simply want to add the financial and commercial uh, element to to facilitating trade with the port city and also use the port city opportunity to transform management in sri lanka in general so that's a longer term project but initially it starts as a as an opportunity with no legacy infrastructure and no legacy shall we say uh, shall we say legacy constraints legal regulatory or otherwise act primarily focuses on attracting foreign direct investment into sri lanka now in order to do that we have to create the environment that enables it and facilitates it and makes it competitive and then the the act also foresees us improving business processes uh, in other words making streamlining uh, the ease of doing business index factors starting companies starting up stopping companies winding up hiring firing and all of that movement of people um to make it an easy place to come an easy place to to live and an easy place to leave from movement of finances creation of jobs 
and uh, essentially generating economic impact to the country. There were some things that you, that uh, the port city was required to already have achieved uh, by way of construction, by way of acquisition, by way of reclamation. Uh, where exactly are you on, on, on those timelines? They reached and passed, but they have been to a great extent accomplished. So reclamation is 100% completed. But reclamation has to settle and then be certified as capable of sustaining building. So that technical certification takes a little time. Uh, we have thus far certified 34 out of 74 demarcated plots. So technical certification for promotion to invest on and build on, invest in and build on 34 out of uh, 74 for the moment. Then comes the uh, the. the planning uh, projects and proposals, uh, which again, uh, I think those timelines have been, have not been met. Past. The culmination in Sri Lanka of a plan is when it gazetted and the Port City Mass Plan is in the process of being printed under gazette. Uh, it's been signed off by the president. It's, um, it's a city that has already been planned and defined with building control, construction, uh, development control guidelines, like regulations, that define the theme, the purpose, the, the various parameters about building something on a plot. That's already been done. Uh, Sri Lanka is facing uh, an acute foreign exchange crisis that, yeah. along with high commodity prices, is causing oil prices to go up, which downstream means that everything that happens in Sri Lanka uh, is going to become costlier. So now, how do you address all these problems? It's impossible to move in sync with the day-to-day -day macroeconomic challenges because most investors also take a long view. So we're, we're like we're keeping our eye on the horizon, talking with the partners that we are, and our expectation is that the country will will uh, take the necessary steps that might need to be taken. The numbers are frightening at the moment. Um, one thing we have looked at in amongst all this is to create a difference in fiscal management between the port city investments and whatever is outside. So there are various constraints of, uh, put in place now by the central bank for uh, conserving foreign exchange, which, which, which lead to some reluctance from investors to park money in Sri Lanka. So we've created a separate independent and unconnected banking uh, product, if you like, which is unrestricted so that people can bring money in and move money out without suffering the strictures that apply to, uh, to, to bank people in Sri Lanka having foreign currency accounts. So that, that certainty we can give investors is that their, their money will not be subject to any of the restrictions that ours is, our foreign exchange. So they can bring money in and move money out. Uh, it, it, it's a separate kind of account set up for the purpose of investing in the ports. Another problem arising out of this, flowing out of this, is the threat of expropriation. So expropriation actually and nationalization, they are constitutionally safeguarded. There was an expropriation bill at some point in the... Uh, an appropriations bill in, in, in Sri Lanka that was brought out, I think, in 2010, but it was repealed a few years ago. So now there is no threat of that, really. You're protected constitutionally. And in particular, the Port City Act has a special provision that agreements entered into by the commission, between the commission and investors are inviolable. So I think the legal framework has now been put in place to protect investment. Uh, assuming that uh, the current uh, problems of power and electricity and supply and uh, oil uh, continue for, for some time, uh, what is the backup that you have? Power and water are both in short supply in Sri Lanka. So what, what we have to contend with is not just the availability, but also the composition. So from the port city point of view, we have taken a position that uh, in view of the climate and sustainability targets that not just Sri Lanka, but the world and, and India as well 
you're doing fantastically when it comes to integrating renewable energy. We've taken the we've taken the policy decision that energy supply to the port city must be renewable, and also that we can't suffer any kind of failure of uh, power or water or communication within the port city if we are to offer a city of the future for its inhabitants. So now since the city is not there yet, we have a little time to actually put certain measures in place to assure that. So we do have uh, two or three years in which to put together a proper treatment of carbon footprint reduction, net zero water, sewage treatment, recycling, and so on and so forth. So the idea, the design objective, the design brief, the port city is to be unaffected by anything, be completely as sustainable in terms of energy and utilities. Thank you, okay. Bill. You're welcome. मत पूछ यार फिर से स्टॉक्स में फंस गया तो स्टॉक्स के साथ बॉन्ड्स इंश्योरेंस गोल्ड में बैलेंस कर इसमें बहुत तामचाम है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा है ऑल इन वन अकाउंट डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है Investing made easy and rewarding with five paisa. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. From Sri Lanka's ambitious project, let's move on to markets back home. Somewhat stable crude oil prices and ruling BJP's impressive show in state polls. boosted the morale on the streets as indices snapped the losing streak last week but this week investors will keep an eye on the two day federal reserve meeting against the backdrop of us inflation skyrocketing to 40 year high our next report tells more After weeks of beer hammering, bulls were back in action on the last street. Hopes of de-escalation of the Ukrainian war, bargain hunting, and the BJP's win in for assembly elections lifted spirits. This week, Indian stock market will kick off the holiday truncated week with retail inflation and wholesale price inflation numbers to be released on March 14. On the global front, OPEC will be releasing its monthly report on March 15. Oil prices have eased off from their 14-year highs and are hovering around $100 a barrel mark. However, investors are expected to remain cautious whether Brent crude will slip below triple digits amid sanctions imposed on Russia's energy exports. Meanwhile, the US will roll out producer price index data and eurozone will release industrial production data on March 15. Later on March 16, the US Federal Reserve will commence its two-day meet on March 15 and release outcome on March 16. Investors expect the US Fed to increase interest rates by at least 25 basis points to tide rising inflation. Goldman Sachs expects seven rate hikes this year as hotter than expected inflation data is expected to force Fed's hand to hit the nail on the head. On the other hand, JP Morgan forecasts nine strings of rate hikes until March 2023. By end of the week, Eurozone Consumer Price Index data is expected. Bank of England will also set the interest rates on March 17 after UK inflation overshot to a 30-year high. Let's listen to Vinod Nair to know what this means for the markets back home. Next week, the market will focus over the reduction of uh, commodity prices and diplomatic developments between Russia and Ukraine there are better hopes and commodity prices have started to revert if the trend continues uh, and it improves further the performance of indian market will be good else uh, it may get a bit choppy otherwise the market will also focus on inflation data to be released in india and uh, us next week and um, us fed and uh, bank of england meeting which is also scheduled next week uh, this will provide some volatility in between uh, uh, in for next week however uh, inflation data may not be very important in the short term as they are expected to normalize in the long term uh, as the commodity prices and supply constraint in the world uh, reduces in the future World central banks are expected to increase their rates by 25 bips next week and uh, 
it, but it should not be have a negative effect on the market because it is largely you know expected the market has corrected well like uh, in domestic market has corrected by 8% from the start of the war and about 15% from the 52 week high the smart money has started to chip into the market and they are looking for opportunities on a stock to stock basis on a, st- on a short to medium term basis among individual stocks ak prabhakar of idbi capital suggests to watch out these counters listen in chemical prices have gone up uh, in the last two weeks you no know, mainly you no know, chemicals you know where we import from russia or you know from china you know these chemicals have gone up so i think you know chemical companies are something to watch out for you no know, gujarat alkali gnfc you no know, even nfl you no know, where um russia has banned uh, all fertilizer chemicals so that is uh, likely to impact india in a big way but there are few companies which benefit from that in that gnfc and gujarat alkali chemical no uh, or few companies deepak uh, deepak fertilizer also is one more chambal no these are beneficiary of that so i like chemical companies at current level and uh, there is a crisis and these companies can benefit from that crisis against this backdrop the tech charts suggest a small pullback rally with a support of 16350 to the 50 packed index volatility is expected to continue as sensex signals a downturn to 53000 levels with a support of 54000 अब क्या किया शेयर्स में ट्रेडिंग तुम्हें फाइव पैसा नहीं पता ओए, अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर मिलते हैं रिसर्च टूल्स पोर्टफोलियो एनालिटिक्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज भी डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा ना अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग swift transfer of money between bank accounts has made all types of transactions smooth including those happening in markets gone are the days when people used to wait in serpentine bank queues to send money across through imps we can transfer money within seconds our next report tells more about this platform Introduced in 2010, Immediate Payment Service or IMPS is as the name suggests a fast payments system. It provides 24/7 instant domestic funds transfer facility. India was the fourth country after South Korea, South Africa and the United Kingdom to introduce it. This facility is provided by the National Payments Corporation of India or NPCI, an umbrella organization for operating retail payments and settlement systems in India. through its existing nfs switch the system provides for real time transfer of funds between the remitter and the beneficiary with a deferred net settlement between banks one can transfer money via imps by using various channels like internet banking mobile banking apps bank branches atms sms and interactive voice response system that is ivrs besides banks the system allows non bank entities such as prepaid payment instrument issuers to participate and facilitate remittances from wallets to the recipient bank accounts presently imps person to person funds transfer requires the remitter to make the transfer using the beneficiary mobile number and the mobile money identifier or mmid both remitter and the beneficiary need to link their mobile numbers with their respective bank accounts and get the mmid in order to send or receive funds using imps Initially the system required both the remitter and the beneficiary to be registered for mobile banking which was inhibiting the growth hence the system was upgraded to enable remittance of funds by using other parameters such as account number and IFSC code or by using bank account linked aadhar number any entity with a valid banking or prepaid payment instrument license from the reserve bank of india is eligible to participate in imps In IMPS a transaction is received at National Payments Corporation of India or NPCI 
for routing to the beneficiary bank only after the remitting bank has debited the remitting customer's account. Therefore, the risk of a remittance being made with the remitting customer not having adequate funds is addressed. Currently, 644 members are live on IMPS, which include banks and PPIs. The per transaction limit in IMPS effective from January 2014 was capped at Rs 2 lakh for channels other than SMS and IVRS. The RBI, in view of the importance of the IMPS system in processing of domestic payment transactions, increased the per transaction limit from Rs 2 lakh to Rs 5 lakh for channels other than SMS and IVRS in October 2021. With RTGS becoming operational round the clock, there has been a corresponding increase in settlement cycles of IMPS, thereby reducing the credit and settlement risk. The number of monthly IMPS transactions have also jumped from 248 million to 420 million in two years. Yaar, ice cream khaye? Nahi yaar, kulfi. We Indians disagree on everything, but we agree SBI is the banker to every Indian. Arey SBI contactless debit card. I agree. SBI is the banker to every Indian. The popularity of IMPS can be gauged by the funds that are transferred using this platform now. In February this year, 3.84 trillion rupees were processed through IMPS compared to 2.14 trillion rupees in February 2020. Well, that's all we have for you today. We will be back with more news and analysis in our next episode. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.